dreams? How would you like a career with unlimited potential to advance? Full-time positions have opened up at Marketing Solutions. Rapid advancement opportunity is available. We are a high-energy family-like team with weekly payments and several direct marketing opportunities. We are awesome. Very secretive, only allowing the best of the best in our agency. We are rapidly growing and are open for all kinds of skills. Do not read things that claim we're a scam. They are just jealous nine to fivers without any hope in life or advancements. We are a team. We are a family. We reek of positivity. So what are you waiting for? Apply to Marketing Solutions it is the best decision you'll ever make. Hey fuckers, it's Flower Gothic. As you'll probably know, I graduated from college last December. Throughout my last semester, I started putting myself out there in the job world updating my resume and applying to various positions that suit my degree and interests. In November, I got a message from a company called The Elite Texas. It was a local quote-unquote direct marketing agency. They said they were impressed by my resume and wanted to have a Zoom interview with me. Here's what they said. Hello there, Julia. After reviewing your resume, we believe you have key skills and traits that would be a huge asset to our team. We would love to invite you in for a virtual Zoom interview with our hiring team to discuss the various opportunities we have available to you. We have become a trusted business partner to the Texas markets, helping companies transform their growth strategies and scale their brands to new heights. With our fast-growing team, we have exceeded all growth projections and are very excited for all the upcoming projects we have moving into 2021. We are contacting you for positions within our Houston, Texas location. Please select a time below in order to schedule a preliminary Zoom interview with our hiring team or let us know a time tomorrow between 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. you're available. This will allow us to get through any and all initial questions on both ends to determine if we are a good fit for one another. If you are a great fit, we will proceed with a second interview. We look forward to meeting you virtually, of course. I went on the company website and read up on their history, which said, The Elite Texas is here to revolutionize your brand strategy and give you the exposure you need to grow to new heights. We understand the recent world conditions have made it increasingly difficult for businesses to showcase their offerings in a rapidly changing market. With careful analysis and planning, we'll design your perfect brand strategy that will boost your profits almost immediately. Our approach can be broken down into three segments, brand management, market consulting, and retail support. We give our clients peace of mind knowing their company is in great hands. So I was under the assumption that they were gonna hire me for some kind of editing job, you know, editing advertising footage for local clients so they could buy out ad time on local TV or Google or some shit. You know, the stuff I went to school for to learn how to do. The first Zoom interview had me raise an eyebrow though. The Zoom meeting was on an early weekday morning. I dressed in one of my suit sets and talked with the hiring manager. He seemed nice enough. He asked me about my passions and goals, and he was impressed enough by me to uh, schedule a second interview. What he didn't know, however, was that I had an interview with a different marketing firm later that day. 
The name of the other company doesn't matter as I didn't get a call back from them, but the hiring manager there made the mistake of telling me exactly what that position entailed. Sales. I do not have sales experience, unless you count the time I waited tables at the gentrified Hop Dottie Burger Bar. I directly told the manager I wanted to work in editing and that I would be happy to do any editing work they would need. I guess that's why they didn't call me back. I didn't think much of the other company until a few days later, when I had my second interview with The Elite Texas. It was also on Zoom. They tried to get me to go to the office, but I declined for irrelevant reasons. The same guy as before was there to interview me. He gave me a rundown of the position. And the red flags showed up. The position was explained to me similarly to the other companies. One of those direct marketing positions where people, regardless of skill set, would pedal at stands for like seven hours a day. Like, have y'all ever seen one of those mall kiosks where people try to aggressively sell you shit or try to get you to donate to a charity? It was that. But I was curious. I wanted to dig deeper to see how fucked up this company was. So I agreed to a couple more interviews and I recorded almost everything. Okay. Give me a quick second. Alright, now, uh, overall though, uh, I'll be pretty uh, just black and white now, from a scale of 1 to 10, uh, I honestly, 1 being like, you know, not really confident in this, you know, if you can do it, uh, it's honestly to be 10 being like, uh, Santi, you know, I'm very confident. I know I definitely can like crush this. Like, where do you think you fall between that scale? Um, I'd say a seven and a half. Cause I feel I do have the confidence to do that. I just feel okay. there is definite room for improving myself. Okay. But you think with like proper, like coaching and guidance that you'd be able to fulfill that? Correct. At this point, I remembered that one of my favorite YouTubers, Elise Yeezy, please fucking subscribe to her, she is so fucking underrated, I love her so much, discussed doing something similar to this for a while. Her quote unquote sales job mirrored what was being offered to me. I think in the mornings we had to be at the main office, something like half seven in the morning, with our manager we would have these little pep talks every morning where he'd just show us you know those bullshit motivational videos like always do your best and we had this thing that we would have to shout in the mornings because it would stand for something we had to shout like juice but psychotically they wanted you to be a good salesperson has to be happy and chipper and stuff and has to believe in what they're selling even if they're selling absolute garbage by the time we would get back to the office and then i don't know do some more fucking shouting or sometimes play weird games. I think I would go home by about 8 p.m. What were the hours again? Like, I... Right. So in the morning when we're training, it's uh, usually 9.30 to about 11, 11.30. All right. It take about 30 minutes or so to actually get to the events. Mm-hmm. And then when you're in the field, that's around 12 to 7 p.m. All right. Of course, when you get to more of a managerial role, uh, their hour, I guess your hours switch in the office, the field switches. But when people first start off, that's kind of the hours first of the training. All right. Like, and then I believe the team leader had me and this other guy almost compete with each other in the interview section about why we'd be good for the job. And I just said a load of pretentious bullshit. However, though, we do have, uh, the competition is pretty sharp. I mean, we do have other people as well graduating, maybe in the marketing field, right? Or right. even people that are making career switches, right, uh, looking to find other jobs, especially without COVID. Um, so the competition is as sharp as ever, right, compared to everyone else. Uh, Correct. Now let me ask you a question. If you were us, right, why would we, like, why would we hire you? Like, what do you think you could, like, bring to the table compared to everyone else? Spoiler alert for that second thing. I got the fucking job. I got an offer from the company. Don't worry. I didn't take the job. I mean, obviously I didn't take the job. I don't even live in Texas anymore. I didn't want to work in a sales cult. Besides, they wanted me to quote unquote train in December and I had better things to do. Like watching all the James Bond movies. I'm working on it!
goddammit! There are dozens, if not hundreds, of these quote-unquote direct marketing agencies. So I decided to look into how they operate on a day-to-day -day basis. The schedule I was given wasn't an uncommon occurrence. Devil Corp is well aware of its unappealing vacancy and knows that being truthful with prospective employees is simply not an option. If you read the main articles and explore the links, you'll find they post false and misleading advertisements to attract new blood. Unfortunately, their inaccurate ads only serve as a hook to pull people in the door before they're buried in an avalanche of bewildering mumbo-jumbo designed to attract trap them in this stale and sour profession. Owners put on a show attempting to convince job hunters that the position is a genuine opportunity. They'll point to themselves as living, breathing examples of success, even though most owners are struggling financially. In this business, image is everything, which is why they're required to promote the dream by wearing suits and flaunting watches, etc., all to make reps believe there's light at the end of the tunnel. Nothing more can be farther from the truth. The company wants you to think their job is something special, which is why applicants are told that many are vying for the same position. It's all just sleight of hand, because almost everyone will be hired. These deceivers created a three-stage interview process in order to give their disreputable venture the appearance of legitimacy, while allowing an owner as much time as possible to convince potential recruits that they can succeed by following their profane business model. By the way, this website is called The Devil Corp and it was extremely useful in my research. Please visit it. <laughs> the interview process wasn't uncommon either. Reps will naturally be isolated from friends and family due to the grueling work schedule. Later, they're pressured into eliminating influences and people who are not sold on the business because, quote, they will hold you back. It's not uncommon for reps to live with one another or even with their manager, and sometimes it's the only way to make ends meet. Living with field reps allows an owner to reinforce Devil Corp's disinformation while quelling dissent before it becomes unmanageable. There are also team building nights and conventions designed to keep them cocooned in the shell the company has created. As they progress, they must show they're willing to go the extra mile. They might end up living with other cultists and be flown all over the country to meet the indoctrinated. Their phones will ring at all hours of the night with cult members wanting to have a chit-chat, and this is done so they eat, live, and breathe Devil Corp. The last thing they want is for reps to have a moment to themselves, because they may very well remember who they are and realize they're being conned. Your entire life revolves around your job. You eat, sleep, and breathe sales. If your family and friends ask questions, they are toxic and you should cut them out of your life. So they would be big on talking about how you shouldn't let negativity into your life. There might be people in your personal life who don't agree with this type of job that you have. Maybe it's a close friend or maybe it's a family member. You don't need that kind of negativity. Maybe it's time you know, you think about your future and you think, do you want these types of negative people who think you're crazy for doing a commission-only job? You don't want those types of negative people in your life. Maybe it's time that you think about not having those types of people in your life. Oh, by the way, the particular sales cults that work for charities are often scams. Be careful with your generosity. Generous Australians are being treated with calculated contempt by third-party fundraising companies driven by money. Not humanity, writes Matt Dorlin. No one can argue the enormous challenges facing charities in Australia when it comes to fundraising and without street-level campaigns, desperately needed funds simply would never make it to those who need it. But 
As our Sunday night major investigation proves, something insupportable is happening across the country. The most munificent among us are being flagrantly and deliberately misled. Donors aren't being told that if they sign up for a 12-month donation, up to 93% of that donation goes to APCO. To clarify, it is in the fine print of the donor agreement, but you would fair dinkum need a magnifying glass to read it. The collectors on the streets are more slippery than a squid in the pocket of a plastic raincoat. They'll tell you 100% of everything you give goes straight into the bank account at the charity. What they don't tell you, of course, is that there is a separate back-end deal with APCO, and that the money comes back out in the form of a fixed-fee payment. Paralympian's charity, which charges £10 for scratch cards, spends almost 74% of its income on fundraising. Dream It, Believe It, Achieve It is a registered charity run by one of Britain's most prominent Paralympians, footballer Matt Dimbilo, and few would question its aim of helping the disabled enjoy sport. But like many other charities, it farms out fundraising to a commercial third party. Without this program, we would not be able to achieve our mission of helping disabled athletes and children off the sidelines and into sport, Dimbilo said, adding that the charity gets a minimum of 25% of the profits. According to the latest accounts, it raised £488,562, but spent 359605 that's almost 74%, on fundraising costs. So not only are commercial fundraisers getting s the biggest slice, it seems some of their reps try to boost sales with tall tales about being just 10 pounds short of the target. Charity sales by for-profit companies face crackdown by retailers. Sellers make substantial commissions, companies keep lion's share of the profits. Dozens of outfits across Canada, all with different names, appear to be coordinated by an Ontario-based company called Eagle Eye Events. The products come from a Toronto-based distributor. Many retailers allow community groups and registered charities to use store property in their high-traffic space, and private marketing, marketing companies that donate a portion of their proceeds to charity have also gained access. But as a result of the CBC investigation, Walmart, Sobeys, and Loblaws now say they are cracking down and reinforcing policies that restrict store space to nonprofits. Former employees of some of the companies told CBC that salespeople make substantial commissions on the campaigns. That's not illegal, but it raises a red flag for charity experts. Charities are best to avoid these scenarios, says Mark Blumberg, a Toronto-based lawyer and expert in registered charities. It really incentivizes some practices that aren't for the benefit of the charity sector. As a result, some charities specifically reject associations with private and commission-based marketers. But the CBC investigation found that doesn't stop some marketing companies from going ahead with their campaigns anyway. And before you ask, but Flower, what about the marketing agencies that don't peddle for charities? Yeah, those places are fucked too. Marketing company paid just 80 pence an hour for a 70-hour week, workers claim. In a case brought by GMB, two former workers alleged they received an average of £60 for six-day week selling door-to-door. -door. Britain's largest specialist door-to-door -door marketing company, whose clients include Vodafone and EDF, is being sued by two former workers who say it abused rules on self-employment to pay them the equivalent of 80 pence an hour for 70-plus hour weeks. Camille Muner and Jamie Wright, whose case is being brought by the GMB union, say they received an average of £60 for a six-day-a-week job, selling loft insulation and subscriptions to Love Film, a DVD and video on-demand company owned by Amazon. Muter and Wright, both 21, worked on behalf of two subsidiaries of a Chester-based company called Per Diem during 2012 and 2013. They are seeking more than £22,000 between them for breach of contract, unpaid wages, and holiday pay. The jobs, presented as a swift route to management, were described as self-employed and payable by commission only. A legal claim sent to Per Diem and two subsidiaries by the GMB says the pair never saw their contracts and were obliged to sell or attend team meetings from 10 a.m. until about 10 p.m. Monday to Saturday. There was no opportunity to vary the hours and a strict dress code was imposed meaning they will in effect employed.
And that was the kind of environment the Elite Texas was offering to me. This serves as a warning to those my age, trying to get their start in the adult world. Always vet any company that you get interviews with, especially if they are a marketing firm. For those in the Houston area, these are the names to stay away from. The Elite Texas, Capital Texas, Majesty Marketing USA, Ready Marketing Group, LBC International, Imperium Elite. And to those companies, and others like it around the world, fuck you for taking advantage of young, eager people. Good night and goodbye.